culture. Yeah. So my, my conversation, Dr. Bryant was around as a church. We've got to be intentional about creating safe space for people who have never heard the message of the gospel, which was Jesus' whole, that was his whole flow. All right, guys, so we're going to get started, okay? And we have our topic today is none other than uh, Jamal Bryant and uh, Dr. Jamal Bryant. Okay, I stand corrected. And Bishop William Murphy. Jamal Bryant had already telegraphed that his first interview is going to be with um, Bishop William Murphy Jr. the third. And yes, sooner or later, we're going to add a doctor to it because uh, he's about to get his doctorate. Okay, so <laughs> brace yourself. But we're not going to waste time because Jamal Bryan promised he was going to ask the, the big questions to the bishop himself. So we're going to take a look how all this transpired. Okay, so brace yourself for what these two are about to talk about. Here we go. <laughs> no, you did a baby dedication for two icons of the culture no no I, I first i started off the year saying let our uncle that we don't really agree with yes still come to thanksgiving dinner that that was that was Who's the first uncle? I, i'm not no no names just no that. we gotta be clear <laughs> who is the let's uncle? be clear so the first controversy yes. was, was around uh bishop carlton pearson yes and uh, and to be honest with you this 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 brother to brother i yes. i was talking to my church uh Completely honest with you, all of my PR people said, don't bring up Carlton Pearson, don't bring up the dedication, yes. and don't bring up New Year's Eve. And I want to be clear, you brought up Carlton Pearson. I didn't bring him up. Well, I tried to jump over well, you. Well, since you was yes. talking, I didn't so figure that's just because it's been three weeks. It's so. been three weeks. So for those of you who don't go to church and have no idea who Carlton Pearson is, <laughs> Carlton Pearson uh, was a defrocked uh, by uh, uh, the African-American uh College of Bishops yeah. uh, for believing in inclusion uh, and saying that there was no hell for people to uh, go to. Uh, he died uh, very recently after a battle with cancer. Uh, Bishop Murphy was uh, one of the soloists at his uh, funeral. Okay, so I do think um, William Murphy did this on papers because he knew what Jamal Bryant was going to ask him, okay? Jamal Bryant had already telegraphed. He was going to ask him about all these controversies that he has. So for some reason, he decided to bring in uh, the topic about uh, Pearson, okay? And, you know, Jamal Bryant, to be fair, he, you know, he did call out uh, Dr. Carlton Pearson long, long time ago. Okay, so that's one thing I can agree with, <laughs> Jamal Bryant. So I do think that William Murphy bringing this, this topic up was kind of like, uh, kind of like, let's just soften the conversation, so to speak. But be that as it may, I'm even wondering, why is even Jamal asking these questions to William Murphy? Because this is like a kettle calling a pot black, okay? They shouldn't be having this discussion to begin with. But uh, Jamal Bryant was not pleased with what William Murphy did. So I'm like, okay, like, oh, you are the wrong person not to be pleased about what William Murphy did. Because, you know, what's the difference between Jamal Bryant and William Murphy? Really, the things they do are in their church, Okay. So we're going to get into this to hear more exactly what these guys are saying, okay? Uh, and then came so back Lois. home. Yes. <laughs> so low. Where do you... You, you dating yourself, man. What? You a psalmist? Uh, what, no, what I'm not you? even... That don't even he was a right. guest artist at a funeral. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know how you put that together. <laughs> so he was a guest artist He's at like, a funeral. He's like, I did funerals. an A and B selection. He only did A. <laughs> he came back home. Actually, I didn't do an A because I gave my time back because it, it got a little long. So you long, didn't sing so, at all? But I, I didn't sing at all. I was supposed to okay. at the request of his daughter, Majesty. Yes. Uh, which is the segue into how we got here because yes. both of us have this call to this generation yeah. to this church. So uh, Bishop Pearson's daughter, Majesty, who has, uh, I think, um, one of the most cutting edge ministries. She's an up, up and coming soloist. Yes. <laughs> and uh, she just released some music out there. Majesty, you owe me. I just gave you a, a, a free plug. And uh, so we some kind of way we connected social media. She connected to my ministry. And uh, when Bishop passed away, I reached out to say, hey, love you, praying for you. If you need anything, blah, blah, blah. She asked. It would really be an honor if you would come and minister at my dad's uh, celebration of life. Of right. course, D and I jumped on a plane, went to Tulsa, and um, uh, I was just really uh, moved by the lack of presence. And my, my you know, my my um, my conversation was around. We all had an uncle uh, who says stuff that's off the wall that we don't agree with, uh, but bet nobody else say nothing about him. 
Right. Uh, and the the. No, I don't buy what uh, Bishop William Murphy said over here. Don't forget that he is the same one who came out and chastised the church, saying that the way they treated uh, Bishop Carton Pearson, they were wrong. They were wrong. So now he wants to tell us that he doesn't agree with <laughs> Bishop Carton Pearson. Like, does that make sense? I'm like, no, you're lying. Now he wants to clean up as if, you know, uh, forget, don't look here, just uh, just look over here. So, mm -mm, I'm not buying this, <laughs> I'm not buying this, the, this story. <laughs> that we're serving a generation who does not feel safe in church. That the way that the church has handled our beloved, the way that the church has handled our most valued assets after they have displayed some type of humanity is just unsafe to people who have never been exposed to church culture. Yeah. So my, my conversation, Dr. Bryant was around as a church We've got to be intentional about creating safe space for people who have never heard the message of the gospel, which was Jesus's whole, that was his whole flow. Yeah. And of course, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious order of the day, took issue with Jesus because he was always creating safe space for people who had never heard the message of the gospel. And so that was my whole argument, even with... Okay, so already uh, Bishop just starting up with lies over here, okay? What safe space was Jesus, uh, quote-unquote, creating for people? If Jesus was creating safe space for people, why was he pronouncing woes to the Pharisees? How come the Pharisees didn't feel cozy and comfortable in Jesus' safe spaces if Jesus was creating the so-called safe spaces? This is the language of today. This is the cultural language that they want, they're applying, which you're not going to find anywhere in Scripture. This is a problem. As a bishop... Okay, as the minister of the gospel, if you're talking about the things of the scripture, you need to be using biblical language. Okay, so people will understand like, okay, this is what it means. If you're telling me safe space, like, okay, what, what is that? Okay, this is the rainbow jihad uh, type of language. Safe space, because we don't want to call people um, out of their sin. If we are calling out people for sin, then are we creating a hostile environment? Is that a safe space? So, and what, what do you mean by that, Bishop? Okay, what do you mean by that? But this is how, this is a technique that they're using to win in the culture, okay? They use this type of language so people feel comfortable because they are creating a safe space, okay? Sinners, you, sh you shouldn't be feeling a safe space uh, in, uh, amongst believers, okay? You should be like, oh, what's going on over here? Let me change, okay? Because that's what the message is about, okay? There are no safe space when... <laughs> Jesus was calling out people, repent and believe the gospel. There was no safe space. So uh, we'll hear more what the bishop is saying over here with his uh, safe space. Uh, our daughters, uh, Jessica and... Uh, I'll Don't call jump it. all the way in there yet. Oh, oh, okay. So, yeah, so uh, Bernice King's first book was Hard Questions, Heart Answers. Wow. Uh, and one of the things that you have ripped the Band-Aid off is the church's inability to just have conversation. Yes. Uh, and yes. uh, people will take uh, just one clip, one post, 90 one seconds. segment, yes, uh, and say that is a full <laughs> summary of what your theology is. Right. And what I really wanted you to talk about is how we can have compassion while disagreeing. It's the currency of the kingdom. Yes. Uh, I think, uh, Dr. Bryan, this is, this is so key. And I, I, honestly, you know. You compassion is the currency of the kingdom. That's what he's telling us. No, the gospel is the, uh, is the currency of the kingdom. This is the same thing that, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Alistair Big has gotten himself in hard work. Okay? Compassion versus condemnation. That's not the story. That's not the issue. Are we supposed to be compassionate? Yes, absolutely. Okay? We are, we are not to be compassionate about sin. There's no room for you to be showing compassion, something that is sinful. But now they want to bring this indictment upon the church. Which church? These are the things that are happening in these people's churches. So now they want to apply that as a blanket statement to every church that, oh, no, the church is not showing compassion. Which church? Okay. We speak about your, <laughs> about your particular church. But the church of Christ, like, no, the compassion is going to be there. But we are not going to be entertaining sin because, you know, uh, that's not what good churches do, okay? That's not what good churches do. So already, he remember, he has um, created safe space. Now we have compassion as the currency of the kingdom, okay? Transparent conversations. I'm excited about this podcast because it's going to be a safe space for people to have 
fully transparent conversations without the judgment yeah. that uh, a lot of us are still working through our theology. Our, I'm, I'm uh, a few months away from graduating with the Masters of Divinity from awesome. Virginia Union uh, University from the Samuel DeWitt Proctor School of Theology. And just the other night, we were talking about uh, what they call ATRs, African traditional yes. religions. There are about yes. 3,000 or more yes. of them. And the thought of it is, the concept is that there is no separating what is secular and what is spiritual. Because everywhere I go, I take God with me. Everywhere yes. I go, I take the gospel with me. So there is no separation between what is secular and what is uh, spiritual. How I've articulated it is we redeem everything that we don't let the devil just take culture from us. And all we can ever do is a little church dance right. that uh, probably 75 percent of Gen Z's can't even relate to. They've never seen it. Yes, we need to win all of it for Christ, right? We need to win the culture for Christ. But the techniques, the methodology that a uh, bishop uses, they're just the kind of means. Okay, these are the same things that people are doing outside. So he's deploying those things. How, you gonna, how else are you going to win the culture? So you are bringing these secular songs in the church, and then he's telling us that, okay, we need to bridge the gap. There shouldn't be, uh, you know, some spiritual and some secular. But you are bringing secular things in the church. So which is it? Which is it, Bishop? Which is it? Which is it? And Jamal Bryant had promised that he was going to ask tough questions, but for all I'm seeing, they're all in cahoots, okay? He's agreeing with everything that... Um, uh, you know, William Murphy is saying over here. So, you know, where is this bombshell that you promised? You telegraphed that you're going to ask tough questions. I'm not seeing any tough questions over here. Maybe a, a little bit later, but so far, nothing. And so we're now tasked to win a generation who doesn't know who C.L. Franklin is, uh, who doesn't know who Samuel DeWitt Proctor is. Right. We're, we're now ministering to a generation um, there arose another king who didn't know Joseph. Yes. So we, we've been here before. And so now I'm faced with what do I do with a same gender loving couple who now has a child who wants to dedicate that child back to God? Uh, is the child the sin? Is the, th this, is, this is what's not safe because, you know, I've, I've seen all kind of stuff. Well, now I believe in uh, same. I'm, the word is I married them. Yes. I, I didn't perform the, the wedding. I dedicated the baby. Right. I dedicate. Let's y'all say this with me. I dedicated a baby. Those, now, those are our daughters. We're walking with them. We love them. I know the scripture talks about how can two walk together except they agree. Right. But we can agree to disagree as well. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> we, we don't, we'll carry on. But no, we're just going to let that one not slide. So he just told us. Can two walk together unless they agree? That's what the scripture teaches. But now he's telling us like, oh no, we can disagree. Wh which is it? Are we are we going to agree with what the scripture teaches according to what he says? Can two walk together unless they agree? That's what the scripture teaches. So can we stay there? So, but now he's jumped on, we can disagree. Nobody out here ever said that uh, the baby was an issue, okay? We know the baby's innocent. That was a cute little boy that they have that's not the issue at all okay but according to uh the bishop over here those are their sisters okay they're working with them and they want to love on them by you dedicating their baby you've just co-signed to their lifestyle instead of you telling them like you know what you want me to dedicate your baby there's no way i can dedicate your baby given the situation that you guys are in that's it. I'm sure there's so many other pastors who would love to do that job. But no. But because, you know, we are Murphy wants to uh, be in with the quote-unquote these celebrities, okay? That's why they felt so comfortable to go to him. They specifically went to we are Murphy. Oh, and by the way, that's their pastor. Because that's what they said, okay? The Brad says, you know, we are Murphy. Uh, that's her pastor. So now he wants to pretend... Like, oh, no, 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 no. You perform the duties because, you know, those are in, in your church. And then he went on like, oh, no, people were saying that I, uh, um, I, I did their wedding. He did do their wedding. Are you telling me if they had asked him to do their wedding, the bishop would have said no? I find it hard to believe. The, 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 the nexus bishop of the African traditional religions that you also see in Native American uh, religions yes. and South American uh, religions and West Indian is a little bit 
skewed from the premise you're raising it because they are dealing with the secular and the sacred in terms of the wind is sacred. The trees are sacred. Right. The right. water is sacred. Right. Where you found yourself in the epicenter of the storm oui. is uh, walk it out. Yeah. So th they would say that's not the that's not the same thing. Yeah, that's not what they're in, saying. In separating that sacred and the secular. Right. So let's let's go back to Carlton Pearson. OK. So Carlton Pearson, your call to the church was the absence of compassion, even while disagreeing. Absolutely. OK. Absolutely. Okay. That, that 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 the off uncle still get to come to Thanksgiving. Yes. dinner. He gonna bring macaroni and cheese. Yes. But nobody's gonna eat it. Yes. Th that's that, that's that's what I'm talking about. This safe family dynamic yes. that I think we have abandoned because if I can't agree with you, then I can have no love or compassion right. or, or even um, uh, proximity yes. to you. And and I think that was uh, what got Jesus killed <laughs> is yeah. that he was raising these issues of being around people that were not quote unquote religious or uh, sanctified or whatever the language would have been back in that day that he was. Now the bishop has just lied to us. Okay. He says that Jesus, uh, so he is implying that Jesus was killed because he was, uh, by compassion. He was, uh, with other people. That's not what the text is. That's not what the text says. Okay. <laughs> they killed Jesus because Jesus claimed to be God. That's why they killed him. If Jesus, whether he was compassionate or not, that does not warrant a death sentence, let alone a death on the cross. So this idea of manipulating, creating something that's not there, and then they're just plastering Jesus all over it. Like, oh, this whatever Jesus. Which Bible is he reading? Okay, that's not what my Bible tells me. Okay, that's not what my Bible tells me. But this is what happens when these false teachers are running rampant, and then they have people... Um, the only thing they got going for them, they do have this cultural capital, okay? That's why he does not hesitate to, you know, rub shoulders with the celebrities, okay? Because that's how they, they, they keep their capital. That's what he's doing over here. So now he's changed the story, like, oh, this compassion, uh, you have to avoid. Carlton Pearson, biblically speaking, yes, he was supposed to be marked and avoided. Marked and avoided. Marked and avoided, according to the scripture. But... Uh, William Murphy is more compassionate. He's more loving than what the scripture teaches, even than Jesus himself. So he decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to even slander the church of Christ himself uh, just so I can appear to these cultural people that are more loving and more caring. He had no problem with Carlton Pearson. He had no problem uh, dedicating Dabrat's baby. You tell me he'll have an issue uh, marrying anybody? Come on, you know? Oh, who is he lying to right now? These are just lies upon lies upon lies upon lies. That is all I had for you guys today. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Until next time, remember to be in the know. Thank you.